क्लास वन पॉलिटिकल साइंस क्लास टुडे आई विल स्टार्ट लेसन सिक्स नॉन अलाइनमेंट एंड द नॉन अलाइन मूवमेंट द टॉपिक ऑफ द टुडे इज नेचर ऑफ नॉन अलाइनमेंट ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ द लेसन आर नेचर ऑफ नॉन अलाइनमेंट ओरिजिन एंड एवोल्यूशन ऑफ नॉन अलाइनमेंट रेलिवेंस ऑफ नॉन अलाइनमेंट नैम इन कंटेम्प्रेरी वर्ल्ड इंडियाज रोल इन नैम ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द डे आर नॉन अलाइनमेंट इट्स मीनिंग नेचर ऑफ नॉन अलाइनमेंट क्रिटिकल इवेल्युएशन ऑफ नॉन अलाइनमेंट जस्टिफिकेशन ऑफ नॉन अलाइनमेंट स्टूडेंट्स इट कवर्स योर पेजेस फ्रॉम एटी थ्री टू एटी एट बिफोर डिस्कशन ऑफ दीज ऑब्जेक्टिव i would like to discuss the key terms with you the first key term is unilateralism means a doctrine that supports one sided action when a country uses unilateralism it refuses to involve other states in its foreign affairs nato the north atlantic treaty organization also called the north atlantic alliance is an intergovernmental military alliance between 30 north american and european countries the treaty was signed on 4th april 1949 here i have talked about the 30 countries three of nato members on nuclear weapon states that is france the united kingdom and the united states but here i will tell you that six european union member states who have declared their non alignment with military alliances are not nato members these are austria cyprus finland Ireland, Malta and Sweden. This NATO was created in 1949 by US to provide collective security against the Soviet Union. This is an indication of Cold War. Next is NAM, non-aligned movement formed in 1961. through an initiative of the indian prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru during the cold war period with an initiative not to join either of the power blocks and to remain neutral the non aligned movement is a forum of 120 developing world states that are not formally aligned with or against any major power block after the united nations it is the largest grouping of states worldwide the next is post cold war era it is the period after the end of the cold war some scholars claim that the cold war ended when the world's first treaty on the nuclear agreement was signed in 1987 the soviet union as a superpower ended after its dissolution in 1991 next is unipolarity according to international politics unipolarity describes distribution of power in which there is one state with most of the cultural economic and military influence students you can imagine which state i am talking about for example after the fall of soviet union in since 1991 the united states got unipolar status but you know current international system is changing from unipolar system to bipolar system with china occupying the other pole you know what is going on these days china is trying to occupy the other side of the pole and the world is changing from unipolar to bipolar next is cold war 
state of political hostility and military tension between two power blocks after the second world war next is third world the developing countries of asia africa and latin america asia africa and latin america were the colonies of european continent that is imperial countries now here students we never use the undeveloped countries for asia africa and latin america because undeveloped is a negative term they are trying to develop so the term is used developing india is called developing country because india comes in asia next is ceto the south east asia treaty organization was an international organization for collective defense in southeast asia created by southeast asia collective defense treaty signed in september 1954 the purpose of the formation of ceto was to check the spread of communism you know communism was spread by ussr ceto was disbanded in 1977 and before that even the country like pakistan left ceto in 1973 you know why because the organization failed to provide the assistance uh, due to its conflict with india pakistan had conflict with india and pakistan asked for help and ceto could not provide assistance to pakistan so pakistan left ceto in 1973 is it clear now the next is warsaw pact the soviet union and seven of its european satellite signed a treaty establishing a military alliance of communist nations in eastern europe in 1955 the next is topic nature of non alignment you know here i am going to start the topic non alignment you know the meaning of non alignment students non means not and alignment means joining here the country like india after independence pandit nehru our prime minister decided not to join you know what not to join that time world was divided into two power blocks led by usa and ussr and pandit nehru our prime minister decided not to join any of the power block which they were leading so the policy started by him is called non alignment you know every sovereign state has its foreign policy every sovereign state has its two policies one is internal second is external external policy is called foreign policy so our foreign policy is based on non alignment it is not only now india's foreign policy many nations have joined like 120 countries are members of non alignment so non alignment had its birth in the post 1945 world as an answer of the new sovereign states to the forces of cold war and alliance politics of the two superpowers which were involved in the dangerous cold war the two things happened in 1945 you know which two things happened first is end of the second world war and second the establishment of united nations the united nations was set up to maintain peace and to end any other world war so this was the 1945 and after that one thing more started and that is the clash between us and ussr they became the superpowers and that clash is known as the cold war 
now they started the military alliances this is a period of cold war and the country like india which came up as a now new sovereign states which got free now after 1945 due to the united nations also united nation favored the freedom of the colonies so we decided not to join any of the power bloc so this is the period of the international relations that time in a world divided into two rival power blocks that is us bloc and ussr bloc several new sovereign states decided to remain away from both these blocks and the cold war so i have already told you newly sovereign states like india and many other countries decided not to join any of the power blocks so this was our foreign policy so asia and africa were the colonies of european countries i already told you so we decided not to join any of the power block they did this with the view to maintain their independence in the international relations as well as for keeping the forces of the cold war free you know if we again join them it will be the same thing as we struggled a lot for our freedom we were, we decided not to do the same things again not to join them for this we decided to be friends with them but politically not to join any the military bloc the policy which guided the path of such states came to be known as the non alignment now i will tell you the meaning of non alignment isolationism means policy of aloofness in international relations but non alignment stands for aloofness only from military alliances and cold war and not from all international relations so i would like to tell you here that non alignment is um, aloofness only from the military alliances not from all the types of international relations non alignment means opposition to cold war alliances and aggressive power politics is it clear it stands for full and active participation in international relations on the basis of an independent foreign policy based on such principles as peace friendship and cooperation with all countries of the world so under the non alignment pandit nehru decided to be away from the military blocs so at the time of war we will not join them but otherwise he decided we are friends of war now i will tell you the definition of non alignment the credit for using the term non alignment for the first time goes to george lisaka who used it to describe the foreign policies of the states which had decided not to join either of the two blocks in the world politics of the post war years it was after his that the term non alignment came to be adopted for describing the policy of keeping away from cold war or military alliances and power politics among the two superpowers and their blocs according to pandit nehru non alignment means attempt by a nation to keep itself aloof from military blocs it means trying to have independent viewpoint and must have friendly relations with all countries so you see he means to be away from the military blocs and must have friendly relations with all countries Nehru described non-alignment as a principle of independent foreign policy. 
in simple words non alignment means a foreign policy which while keeping herself free from cold war and military alliances actively participates in international relations now i will discuss nature or features of non alignment the first one is opposition to cold war the origin of non alignment came at a time when the usc and ussr got involved in the cold war the peace after the second world war was a tense peace you understand the meaning of peace and tense along with peace the word tense is there so it was a tense peace as the cold war between the two superpowers was keeping the world at the brink of a new war already the second world war was over so they were taking the world to the brink of a new war several states like india considered cold war as a totally harmful exercise against international peace and security as such they decided to oppose cold war by remaining away from it each of the two superpowers tried to win over other states particularly the new sovereign states here new sovereign states i hope you understood that is the countries of asia africa and latin america the non alignment means opposition to cold war and unhealthy and dangerous power politics among nations next is opposition to military security alliances non alignment is opposed to all types of military or political alliances which are nothing but means of tension and power politics it opposes security alliances like nato ceto and warsaw pact and similar others as instruments of cold war students in discussion of uh, terms new terms i have already talked about nato and ceto and warsaw pact these were the military alliances of offered by usc and ussr nato and ceto alliances were offered by usc and warsaw pact by the ussr students other than nato ceto and warsaw pact one more uh, alliance was offered by usa for europe and that is the marshall plan the marshall plan also known as the european recovery program was the us pro recovery program for the us development due to the devastation of the us um, european continent during the second world war it was offered in 1948 such alliances really constituted a source of pressure as these were used by superpowers as these instruments for maintaining their control over the members of their respective alliances next is non involvement in power politics non involve a uh, non alignment emerged as an anti power politics concept it rejected unhealthy struggle for local regional continental or world domination it was opposed to the concept of power for the sake of status next is peaceful coexistence and non interference non alignment accepts and advocates peaceful coexistence and non interference as two basic principles of international relations it believes that cold war and its attempts to maintain peace through preparation for war are unjust and harmful principles these should be replaced by faith in peaceful coexistence and non interference 
Next is independence in foreign relations. You know, foreign relations mean external policy. There must be independence. Non-alignment involves the principle of keeping the independence of foreign policy of each nation. That is required because if a state is sovereign, it must be independent in foreign relations. In fact, the origin of non-alignment must was also due to the desire of new states to keep their foreign policies independent from the possible pressures of the superpowers. It was felt that alignment with any one power or bloc would limit the freedom of action of the new states in international relations. Next is a policy of action, not isolationalism. This is very, very important. Non-alignment accepts that the right and obligation to participate fully in international relations. It stands for both full and active participation in world politics and for freely expressing one's views on all international issues and problems. Next is non-alignment doesn't mean mutual al alignment of the non-aligned countries. Another vital feature of non-alignment is opposition not only to the two blocks of the power, but also to the policy of building a third force or a third block in international relations. The aim of the non-alignment is to build an area of peace and area which regrets war, cold war, alliances and supports peace in a positive way and believes in cooperation among all states. It doesn't mean that if India rejects the power blocks like US block or USSR block, by offering non-alignment, it's making its own block. No, it's not like this. In 1961, Nehru, Nasser and Tito accepted give a, the given five essential tests of non-alignment in international relations. They are the founder members of non-alignment. Independent foreign policy based on non-alignment and peaceful coexistence, opposition to colonialism and support for liberation movement, non-membership of any military alliance or bloc, absence of bilateral military base on the territory of the state, reduction of tension in superpower, so, each nation that wishes to be accepted as non-aligned nation has to satisfy all these five tests. Now, I will discuss the critical evaluation of a non-alignment. Some critics hold that non-alignment is an unrealistic and idealistic principle which cannot be fully operationalized. In the name of neutrality, in the Cold War, the non-aligned states keep on refraining from taking strong policy decisions. So they feel that uh, policy of non-alignment is both unrealistic in approach and content. The non-aligned states always involve in attempts aimed at following the middle path for playing safe. They feel like this, that non-aligned countries are playing safe. They are avoiding the things happening at international level. Critics argue that through non-alignment, the new states always try to practice double standards for securing aid and help from both the camps. Both the camps mean US camp and USSR camp. 
it was justified during the era of cold war but it no longer suits now after the end of the cold war the primary objective of the non alignment was to be away from the power blocks but after the disintegration of the ussr in 1991 this objective is no more there so now there is a justification of non alignment no doubt the cold war has ended yet the non aligned countries are playing an active role in securing the world peace and cooperation among all the members of international community it is on record that non alignment countries like india while remaining aloof from cold war and power blocks have always expressed their views independently and boldly on all international issues non aligned countries like india has been actively participating in united nations also and other international conferences also the decision of some states like india to follow non alignment was a source of weakness for the cold war had non aligned countries joined any one bloc it would have strengthened the cold war it's a fact some with the countries which are in non alignment if they would have joined the cold war block the those blocks must have strengthened as such non alignment con- continues to be useful and relevant fundamental principle of the foreign policies of more than half of the strength of the international community of the nations in the past it served well the national interest of the non aligned countries in the present the non alignment continues to be a source of strength and cooperation for the countries of the third world non alignment must continue for keeping up the fight against these evils non alignment is not a double alignment it doesn't stand for military or political alignment with any state it rests upon the principle of equality and mutual respect for all students finally i can say that the movement has succeeded to create a strong front on the international level representing countries of the third world in the international organizations on the top of which is the united nations itself on the other hand the long standing goals of movement remain to be realized students this finishes the discussion of my today's topic that is the nature of non alignment you will read the pages from 83 to 88 now i will discuss the topic related questions the short questions are define the term non alignment name the founder members of nam how did the non alignment help the third world countries to maintain their sovereignty give the five principles of peaceful coexistence of nam and the long questions are what is non alignment explain the basic features of non alignment critically evaluate the nature of non alignment you will watch the video again and do the snap homework question next time i will continue the chapter till then goodbye thank you